Here to look at the legal aspects of this is the author of the number one New York Times bestseller, The Russia Hoax, Fox News legal analyst, uh, Greg Jarrett. You know, I, again, I watch some of these lawyers and I'm like, where did they where did they go to get their law degrees? <laughs> you know, you're absolutely right. In, in fact, I was listening to one legal analyst earlier today who said, well, the president can't do this because uh, Congress and others might disagree with him that it's a national emergency. That is just flat out wrong. Congress, as you pointed out in 76, vested authority in the president to decide when a national emergency might be declared. And it gives him greater authority, Sean, to take actions that he might otherwise be constrained to take. And so uh, the president, all he does is notify Congress uh, that there is an emergency, and he can go further. He can cite specific statutes that he intends to utilize. One of them is literally, it's 10 U.S.C. 2808, emergency powers to construct any unauthorized construction. That's his strongest specific statute beyond the National Emergency Act. But there are three others that he could use. He could direct the Secretary of the Army. He could direct the Secretary of Defense. And he could employ the Secure Fences Act of 2006 that empowers the Homeland Security to build a physical barrier enhancement along our southern border. Remember, that's an act that was voted for in favor by uh, Barack Obama was a senator, Hillary Clinton senator, Joe Biden, Chuck Schumer, all four of them when they were senators in 2006 voted in favor of that. So, you know, will there be a judicial challenge? Will somebody file a lawsuit? Of course they will. Every time the president sneezes or coughs, he's sued. But judges are not permitted to substitute their own thinking and judgment in deciding what constitutes an emergency. Congress conferred that authority specifically on the president in 1976. And in fact, there are still 31 states of emergency still in effect, dating all the way back to President Carter and his state of emergency on Iran back in 1980. So we have two instances in modern political history, many of the same players. In 2006, the Secure Fence Act passed with bipartisan support. That was to construct uh, a wall, physical barriers, 700 miles of the nearly 2,000-mile uh, U.S.-Mexico border. And 64 Democrats voted for the measure in the House, 26 in the U.S. Senate. Chuck Schumer, he voted for it. Hillary Clinton voted for it. Joe Biden voted for it. Barack Obama voted for it. Praised the bill and saying it would do some good and help stem some of the tide of illegal immigration in this country. And then in 2013, all Senate Democrats, most House backed the, in the House, backed the comprehensive immigration reform legislation. And the so-called Gang of Eight bill, and that included $46 billion for border security, uh, $8 billion to repair or reinforce barriers along the 700 miles of the border as required under the Secure Fence Act. And the 2013 immigration bill had been signed into law. You know, that would have ramped up, you know, enforcement at that time. So the reality is, why are they changing? Why is it now immoral? Is it immoral only because Chuck... Uh, Schumer and Nancy Pelosi, they don't want to give the president a win, especially in light of Officer Singh being murdered uh, in part because of sanctuary state laws out in California. Or, you know, I had on the parents of this young man, Pierce Corcoran. I mean, I, I, my heart was broken for them, killed by an illegal immigrant in Knoxville, Tennessee. Um, he might otherwise have been alive. This guy was in the country 14 years and in the criminal justice system. So at what point... Do these people, you know, get called out for this hypocrisy of theirs? Because it's all over the place. Well, you're exactly right. And outgoing Governor Jerry Brown, you know, said, oh, well, the death of Officer Singh had nothing to do with our sanctuary laws. At least he's wrong. It, it had everything to do with their sanctuary laws. But you're, you're right about Democrats in Congress that the only reason they oppose the construction of a wall is because Donald Trump advocates it. Uh, if it were Barack Obama or Hillary Clinton or Joe Biden uh, or any of the other senators, including Schumer, who have advocated in the past for such a construction, why, of course, they, they 
would be all in favor of it. But th- this is about not wanting to help Donald Trump get reelected, not wanting to give him a political victory and a promise that he vowed to voters who put him into office. So it's about uh, personality and and uh, and not policy. And that's the simple answer. Well, let me, I, I think their own words, you know, make the stronger case than I could make or you could even make. And that is their past support for the wall. Listen. I would listen to the people who live along the border, who understand what it is we need to be doing to protect our country. Well, this is an area where Senator Clinton and I uh, almost entirely agree. I think that the key is to consult with local communities. The American people are a welcoming and generous people. Those who enter our country legally and those who employ them disrespect the rule of law. And because we live in an age where terrorists are challenging our borders, we cannot allow people to pour into the U.S. undetected, undocumented, and unchecked. Americans are right to demand better border security and better enforcement of the immigration laws. Well, we have been on the same page on immigration reform. Our Democratic caucus has adopted certain principles that relate to securing our borders. We're talking about, do we have a commitment to secure the border? Yes. Uh, What are the options that we have available to us? Let's make sure they work. Well, look, I voted uh, uh, numerous times when I was a senator to spend money to build a, uh, a barrier to try to prevent um, illegal immigrants from coming in. What they are talking about is completely opening up the border. Should we have a completely open border so that anybody can come into the United States of America? If that were to happen, which I strongly disagree with, there is no question in my mind that that would substantially lower wages in this country. We are committed to ending the waves of illegal immigration that we've seen in the last 30 years. We will accomplish this goal by building a very sturdy three-leg stool of border security, employment verification, and entry exit. I will now explain what our bill does in each of these areas to prevent future waves of illegal immigration. Make no mistake, Our border will be secured as a result of this bill. We appropriate $6.5 billion up front in this bill to bolster our security efforts. That is in addition to the annual appropriations made for each year of border security. Before any legalization can even begin, the Secretary of Homeland Security is to require to come up with a plan on how to deploy that $4.5 billion to acquire new infrastructure, technology, and personnel that will enable the Border Patrol to catch nine out of ten illegal immigrants that attempt to cross our border. Unbelievable. I mean, how do you go from there to it's immoral and <laughs> we'll give you a dollar? Um, you know, I, one of the things I said when I came back, it's not going to take long for the American people to realize they're not there working for the American people. This, their agenda, they're so fixated, hating Donald Trump. They're even willing to turn around completely on an issue as important as border security, and things have gotten worse. I mean, I've been giving out the numbers to everybody that will ever listen, but when you've got the numbers of people that we have, victims of murder and rape, and then the drug trafficking, human trafficking, potential terrorism crossing the terrorists crossing that border, I don't think there's any more important issue. Well, you're right. And by the way, you and your staff are to be commended for coming up, doing your research and coming up with those sound bites, the comments, uh, the advocacy in favor of enhanced border security and indeed uh, construction of a barrier. So it lays bare their acute hypocrisy. Uh, if, if this if it were a President Clinton right now, all of those individuals uh, that that we just heard from, would be falling all over themselves to build a wall. Um, but because but I want to go over this, because this is what's going to happen. If let's say the president and more and more people, as you look at it, they're looking at 4,000 homicides in a two-year period, 30,000 sex crimes, 100,000 crimes of violence uh, and assault. All right, so Americans are watching this. They see what's happening. They know 90% of the heroin comes from across the southern border. Sure. And I think the American people are saying enough is enough. And I'm going to we, we watch the Democrats and they don't want to give him anything. So I think at some point that backfires against them quickly. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I can't think of a greater national emergency at the moment other than fighting terrorism 
than uh, preventing needless uh, deaths uh, due to the opioid as well as the heroin crisis, not to mention crimes of violence uh, committed by those who are coming here illegally. This is a national state of emergency. The president should so invoke it. I agree. Uh, We'll come back, talk more about the legal aspect of all this as we continue with our friend Greg Jarrett, number one bestseller, The Russia Hoax, which we'll be getting back to in the course of this year, I promise. And as we continue with Greg Jarrett, author of The Russia Hoax, number one New York Times bestseller. Uh, Rumors, by the way, I saw you working the other day in your office, and and you're pounding away like maybe volume two is about to come out at some point. That's what I was thinking when I walked by your office. Well, that's a pretty good rumor. Um, I have, in fact, started working on a second volume because so much has happened since the Russia hoax went to print in June of last year. And you well know because you covered it almost nightly. Uh, the lies of James Comey that have now uh, come to the fore, the bias of Peter Strzok and Lisa Page discovered by the Inspector General. I mean, the list goes on and on. And of course, well, the story is not here. done yet. We're going to get a new attorney general. And my the big unknown question is, is he going to enforce the laws of the land? If he does, then all the people that we have exposed as having committed crimes lying to FISA court judges, committing frauds there, and and those that put a fix in in an investigation with Hillary and obstruction of justice and the Espionage Act. If, if, If we have equal justice under the law and application of the laws, all those names we mentioned, they should be in serious legal jeopardy. And these will, will not be process crimes. All right, last question on the wall, though. Um, is there any obstacle? Because I assume the Democrats, they're going to go judge shopping. They'll file in California or in Oregon, knowing that the appeal will go to uh, the Ninth Circuit. And the Ninth Circuit, often, what, 80 percent of the time they get overturned by the Supreme Court. But I don't think that matters. They're buying themselves time. Right. Um, In order to file a proper lawsuit, there would have to be some underlying constitutional violation of rights, not simply a disagreement about discretion, uh, presidential discretion and policy. And so anybody who files a lawsuit opposing what we expect to be the president invoking National Emergency Act um, would be, it's an uphill battle for them because, as I mentioned before, we don't allow judges to substitute their own thinking and judging, uh, in deciding what constitutes an emergency. Is, is there a fast path, if it's a national emergency declared by the president, to get this straight to the Supreme Court? And it'd sure, be fast track. You can always file an expedited appeal, but I'm not sure, uh, you, you know, you could construct the wall. Uh, faster than it would be to to litigate the case. So, uh, you know, the president should invoke it and order construction as soon as possible. All right, Greg Jarrett, uh, author of the number one best-selling book, The Russia Hoax. Thank you, sir. 